Hi everyone, this is Jaini Jailin over here and uh, this is another vlog of Celestial Travels. Thank you so much to everyone who wished me a happy birthday on the Facebook and on the forums. Uh, you know, I really appreciate it. It's really inspiring and motivating. It really brightened up my day and to know that, you know, people, cool people like you guys that are all dedicated and gung-ho and working hard every day like doing cool stuff and you know showing me like that you guys are like doing the collages and doing everything like it's really cool to have you know people like that um, that wish me well so thank you very much um, so today I thought you know I'm a little bit nervous because I'm not used to like I'm more of a, a shy person like I don't um, you know I mean, I, I can talk and stuff in social situations and when I'm prepared, but just, you know, chatting and just like talking off the cuff, like flowing with, you know, just like out there into the void. I'm not really like so much used to that. Um, so it's, it's kind of nerve wracking because I only talk like this with my close friends. So this is kind of a new experience for me, but um, it's a, you know, it's a character building one and I want to you know keep developing and be the best human I can be so uh, this is part of it and so here I am and uh, I thought coach did um, you know an amazing amazing post he's always been you know extremely supportive and um, I thank him so much for that and uh, today he posted some tips on you know, vlogging and being out there, how I should, how I should come at it, my um, attitude, because, you know, like Jai gets, gets, uh, when it gets hit by, by signals, by, um, yeah, signals from people, it, uh, it takes it in really deeply, and, and I don't know what other people's, I, I'm sure every Jai is, is very sensitive, um, but I've always been like really, like, I don't know, I've always had a, a really sensitive, like tuning to, to people's, like, um, you know, moods and, and energies and, and um, intentions. And, you know, this has always been really, um, you know, heavy and intense uh, for me. So, um, so, uh, you know, I, I, so I didn't, um, go back and forth with a lot of people like I would I would I would do enough to just read people like get like the gut reaction and and read but if I felt like a lot of toxicity and stuff I would you know try to av avoid it and so I haven't you know I have some really close friends that I um, that I cherish but you know being out and about and just connecting with everybody that that's been something that's um, that's always been, you know, hard um, to do. Um, but anyways, um, so Coach gave me some awesome advice and tips uh, on how to approach this and kind of things to talk about, which really helps, like stories that move me or um, show and tell because I am, you know, because having me, uh, I always come across like different random things throughout my day, whether it be music, or like articles or video clips or images um, that um, resonate with me in a certain way that I think, ooh, this would be really cool, you know, for to share with other people, either because this person has like a, a specific or particular interest in that thing, and I think that they would get like a, a lift from this, or it's you know just something that's like a like a, um, a good ritual to to share with people. So I try to you know, when I come across those things in my day. Um, I try to, you know, take those and, and share them with my close peoples. So um, I will be sharing those with you. Um, I'm also, yeah, and talking about it, my experiences with the going through the practitioner program because I don't, you know, that I don't always only mentor. I also am a student um, first and foremost, a student, and then I share with people uh, what I've learned. Um, so as I go through the practitioner program just like talking about like the experiences of it um, I'll be sharing that with you guys 
and um, also about reads I do because I do a lot of um, you know collage training as as you guys do, and I'm I've been working um, on the, building up the the 8K collage, and so I come across these like uh, interesting reads and patterns, and and I'll share those as uh, as they come along. So, Coach had given me several articles to pick from, like some interesting juicy little tidbit articles that happen today. And I'm just gonna kind of like go through them and uh, do shiny musing on <laughs> article stories out there on the internet. So first one, um, okay, the title seems, you know, like uh, very moving already. So a minister who presided at Gay's son wedding says, "I'll never be silent again." Um, and. This is a Methodist minister that was, let's see, convicting. Now, I don't know what this story is exactly about, but so I don't know how it hit me, but I'll, I'll share that with you guys as it's happening. Um, so he was convicted by a jury of his ecclesiastical peers of breaking church law for presiding over his son's wedding to a man is refusing to repent. I did not want to make this protest a protest about the doctrine of the church. I wasn't trying to be an advocate, he says. I just wanted this to be a beautiful family affair, and it was, and it was that. Um, so he took a visible and increasingly clear stand over the um, Tuesday's proceedings, which I guess with the wedding wearing. Uh, one became more defiant. He says that the church needs to stop judging people based on their sexual orientation. We have to stop the hate speech. We have to stop treating them as second-class Christians, um, as second-class humans. Absolutely, I'm, I'm, I very much, I have a deep respect for, for this person. I'm, I think he needs to go further, and maybe this will prompt him to go further beyond this. But already realizing through the connection that he has with such a, a, a uh, close other human as your son, someone you created. So you've created this, this being and this, this human being is the way they are and you love them and you, and you live with them and then you realize you know, this, is their, the, this is their preference, this is the way they were made and, and um, you know, I, I commend him for for having when he because when you come, especially for him being um, uh, a minister, so being in a position of authority of the church, so being in that establishment and the way that um, that 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 would weigh a lot on you, I'm sure would weigh a lot on a person. So when you when you come across that uh, that moment when your son tells you, you know, I'm gay and um, and that's the way I'm, I'm going to live my life and openly and I'm going to uh, marry this other person that I love. Um, you know, you ha he has a, a, a moment to make a, a decision. It's a, a, to make either, either to, you know, go back to the stance of the church that he represents or break away from that and say, you know, first and foremost, you're, you're my son. I, I know you. I love you. There's, you you're beautiful. This, this is beautiful and, and um, you know, I don't agree. I don't agree with, with you know, this establishment that I am affiliated with. And I commend him for, for having taken that, that stand um, and, and, and not let the, the memes from the establishment just cloud what he can clearly see is the, is the right thing, which is, you know, his, his son and anyone who is gay is, is like, and this is, a, well, I guess this is the next step that, I mean, uh, it, it would, I think anyone has, it, it may be harder for, it's hard for, for people to take stands at times when they have a lot of pressure on them, I understand. But really the right thing to do now for him would be to take even a more clear stand of his church and, and to either try to change it, but it's, it's built into the basic doctrine of it. So that's, um, you know, that's kind of a, a mm, impossible task. So 
uh, either that or, or, or break away from it and, and start some sort of spiritual uh, or belong to some sort of spiritual movement that, that doesn't look down on human beings like his son, um, who are clearly, clearly to him um, and obviously like beautiful human beings who deserve to be treated as equals. So, cool, cool story. Um, let's see, a little bit lighter note here. Let's see. That would be good for the vlog too, perfect play too. What's that? Because this is a good, good, good line. Good, good stopping point. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, so, I just started. And, and then, so do this one here. That'll be perfect. Yeah, yeah. So, coach, coach You're is wonderful. <laughs> coach is always coaching, which is amazing. <laughs> because it's like real time and you get upgrades and leveling up. Um, it's cool. <laughs> Doing great. Um, let's see, what was I gonna, did the being a Mormon, five types of boredom, explain, five types of boredom explained by baby animals. Let's see what that's about because baby animals, as everyone knows, baby animals are adorable. Who can resist baby animals? So let's see what baby animals have to, to teach us today. There's wisdom. There's wisdom. Over, over <laughs> I know. Oh, this is not it at all. What your fingernails say about your health is not, is, are not baby animals. I, I That's that okay. It may not. <laughs> let's see. I'm going. We will find these baby animals. Now I'm on a... Now I'm on a mission. I found it. <laughs> oh, okay, this is, this is adorable. Okay, so they say that if you want to be instantly anesthetized, uh, just check, the, check out, uh, okay, let's see, I don't know the topic. Ah, in a recent study published in a journal, Motivation and Emotion, uh, a new type of boredom called apathetic boredom is described. So it's characterized by feelings of helplessness and lethargy that are similar to depression. It's the bottom of the boredom barrel. Hmm, that brings... Okay, so researchers explain that some forms of boredom are motivating, like think something, something's got to give, uh, while others are non-achievement oriented. Think couch potato. Still, the scientific categories of boredom are subtle to the non-boredom obsessed layperson. I'm still not quite sure what this, this, this article is about, but okay, okay, here it comes. Here are five emissaries from the animal kingdom to help us explain. So the first picture is a, an adorable baby bulldog who's <laughs> yawning and a big, uh, how do you yawn? Oh, sort of like that. <laughs> but he was doing a big yawn. Yeah, you'll just have to take my word for it. And that's, I guess, indifferent boredom, which describes a state of withdrawal and cheerful fatigue. I thought this was going to be uplifting, but really, <laughs> it's not so uplifting. Which brings me to the point that, like most stories out there nowadays, if you look at them, are, are not uplifting. Like, the ratio is way disproportionate. So we need more more uplifting stories, because... You know, people people got enough weight as it is. They need to, to be lighter. <laughs> and stories about understanding stuff. So stories about understanding what's there in natural law and uplifting rituals so people can all, you know, keep going, moving higher. Um, so I won't actually go over this boredom because it's, I, I like the pictures, but I can't, I can't, yeah, it is. <laughs> I can't share the cute pictures of the little animals with you. And that's really what's, you know, they, I think they was like a, a, sort of they hooked you in with the baby animals so they could tell you about boredom. That's an, a strange, a strange ritual that, I, I don't want to put you guys through the so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, I'll do just a, one quick one that um, I did talk about, uh, I was thinking about and talking about the guys the other day. I showed them this, is uh, uh, check out... Uh, Jean-Claude Vaginai, Jean-Claude Van Damme, he, um, you know, he's, he's had a, a, an interesting life, you know, some, some troubles in his past and stuff. Um, but 
he is, you know, all like Coach has said before, Durams are big into feet, and uh, he's doing a really, a really um, great feat. I mean, this is really like hard stuff, and he he accomplished it, and uh, he's like 53 or 54, something like that. Um, but he's like, you know, like it doesn't doesn't stop him. That's cool when you see. When you see like uh, people like despite any odds, you know, like age or or um, you know all sorts of different factors that that make things more challenging, they they take on the challenge and and they they just like uh, they just face it and face it head on and they just like go for it and, like all in. That's really I really admire that. You know, that's something that's um, yeah, it's just really inspiring. So. He did just that by um, doing a feat in a commercial for it's a commercial for Volvo, um, but it's to uh, it's supposed to be um, uh, highlighting the 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 suspension I guess or like how how straight these these big gigantic uh, trucks uh, can can go, um, and so he's in between two moving trucks. And uh, as the trucks are moving, he's like in between them and feet on, on each one of the trucks. And as they start moving, they start um, very precisely moving apart um, at the same distance. And he starts doing the splits until, you know, the trucks are still, are still moving pretty, uh, a pretty good clip. And he is in a, a full full split uh, like you've seen him and uh, if you've ever seen that image of him uh, sitting you know doing the splits on top of two chairs um, that's he's doing that but on two gigantic trucks that are moving at a good clip and that's really inspiring stuff so uh, props to you Jean-Claude Van Damme that's that's badass <laughs> um, so that's it for today and um, I will see you guys next time